All right, this is an Aaron 824 snowblower. Eight horsepower Tecumseh engine was the original. This is an early 80s model. Uh, some modifications. Uh, the Tecumseh threw a rod la early last week, actually Monday or Tuesday of last week. And uh, my choices were to replace the engine and it would never snow for the rest of the year or don't replace the engine and we would get record snowfall. You know how that goes. Anywho, uh, the Aaron's Predator Harbor Freight engine swaps are kind of uh, uh, popular, so I figured I'd run through uh, my trials and tribulations with the swap. And we'll go over a couple of additions that I've done to my particular snowblower. First thing, probably one of the best things I've done is uh, that's just regular angle iron with a caster and it doesn't even rotate. The caster is fixed uh, orientation, but boy oh boy it certainly makes the uh, it certainly makes the blower glide across the driveway uh, and doesn't tear up the uh, <clears throat> the scraper bar so you don't need to replace that all that often and uh, uh, even the skid bars wear out about two two seasons, two or three seasons, and the skid the steel skid bars wear out. So the wheels make a big difference. All right, the Predator engine swap. This is an eight horsepower Predator engine. Uh, it needed the holes didn't match up with the old Tecumseh, so they had to be drilled in the deck. The original studs that were in place had to be knocked out. They're spot welded on the. Uh, from the uh, transmission side of the uh, the engine deck. Uh, I then just drilled holes, put in new bolts, and then used a stick welder to tack the bolt heads on the underneath side of the uh, transmission or the uh, engine deck uh, so they wouldn't move. You're not going to sneak a MIG gun in there and dodge all the uh, uh, the transmission for the wheels and the gears and the friction disc and everything else. So 1 16th rod electrode and an old stick welder and a couple of taps uh, on the bolt heads and next to the, the, the back side of the engine deck and it turned these bolts into studs. The next thing, this belt keeper, when the, when the uh, you can see how the belt wobbles, when it's not engaged, this belt kind of flips around. If you don't have this keeper in place, it'll flip and, and pop off the pulley. So the engines are different, obviously, than the Tecumseh. So this aluminum spacer I cut on the lathe. Um, it doesn't have to be cut on a lathe. It just looks really nice if it matches the same size as everything else. But you could use 3 8 gas pipe uh, and a bench grinder or even a hand file and uh, make yourself a spacer to move the uh, belt keeper out as far as it needs to be for the installation. The other modification necessary for the Predator is the heat shield right here. The heat shield for the exhaust, the muffler. Um, there we go. I had to take this off because as the uh, snow discharge chute rotates, it was connecting onto the heat shield. And uh, I figured we didn't really need the, uh, didn't need the, the heat shield. The next thing too is the Predator is a 45 degree piston slant versus the old Tecumseh, which was a vertical one. And right here you can see I drilled a new lower hole for the chute discharge drive shaft. It's in the, this is the original bracket. I just drilled a new hole down there to lower it so it gets below. It was actually connecting on the flywheel cover. Um, so that hole dropped the uh, chute discharge. <laughs> but it also made the chute discharge too low for the stock um, drive shaft discharge, so I cut the drive shaft and then put this little sleeve on it to give it a few more inches. And now it comes up here and it's fine distance wise. But that required some work. Let me see the belts. The PTO 
power takeoff shaft is an inch higher on this motor, uh, an inch higher than on the Tecumseh. So my original calculation was is to get belts that were two inches longer in circumference because you have an inch to go up and an inch to come down if the shaft goes up an inch. The wheel, the wheel transmission belt power works just fine. This flops just a little much. I went down an inch and tried that belt, um, but that was too tight. I, I, when I got it on, it wouldn't, it wouldn't disengage. So I decided to try a half inch less, and uh, that's not available at any of the auto parts store, but I did get a half inch less belt by Amazon. That should be here tomorrow and I'll put that on and see how that works. Check the description of this video and I'll put in the lengths of the uh, the belts I got to work so that uh, if you're trying to swap at home uh, you won't have to do nearly the effort and work and calculations that I did. Other than that she's a beauty of a uh, a beauty of a snowblower and uh, I've already already broken in the engine uh, with some 20 minute uh, cycles and cool downs and runs and cycles at idle. So she should be ready to go the next snow blow, this next snowfall. Uh, the cover, this is the belt cover and because the PTO shaft is an inch taller it doesn't fit anymore. So I'll have to fabricate one of those out of some sheet metal at some point. But other than that, there we go an 8 horsepower Predator engine to replace the old Tecumseh. Seems to be a pretty popular modification since Tecumseh engines are no longer available. Anywho, use what you can use. We'll talk to you later. Bye.